John Kenefick was born on the 10th of November 1997, 15 weeks premature, and doctors told his parents, Deirdre and Donal, to expect the worst. Well, I remember the moment he was born because he cried and it hadn't been expected that he would be alive. So I suppose the miracle of life was there um, in, in that, in that well, cry. He was born like this. He came out with his fist clenched. I was just struck by this kind of determination. What he was doing was just going to happen and he was going to live through it. Although he was born with cerebral palsy, from the very beginning, John was determined to defy the odds that were stacked against him, and he was brought home. He really did just thrive, you know. So within, even the first time I brought him back to the hospital after two weeks, they said, oh, is this the same baby? You know, because he just had grown so much, put on so much weight, and um, he just continued to thrive, which was wonderful, really. The years rolled on, and even though John was in a wheelchair, he never let it stop him living life to the full. John would understand and realise, yes, there are differences, but they never got in the way of him being the same as everyone else. Well, 18 years later, and that little boy is now a young man and goes to school here in Blackwater College in Lismore. And at first glance, yes, of course, John is quite different to most of the other students, but when it comes down to it, he isn't really that different at all. Name the elements found in carbohydrates. Um, hydrogen, oxygen, uh, carbon. Excellent. Carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. Well done. I absolutely love it. All the teachers are very nice and my fellow students are very nice and I try my best to do as well as I can. Most people, you know, forget about John on a day-to-day -day basis. They, they don't see anything different about John as a student or anybody else. You know, he blends in the same as every other student. He's challenged the same as every other student. And he loves to challenge the same as every other student and wouldn't have it any other way. Uh, very intelligent, very articulate, very bright young man. Although his condition can make life tough at times, John always has a positive attitude. To be honest with you, Colum, I haven't known it any other way. I was born with cerebral palsy, so really I haven't known any different. Love is the answer at least for most of the questions in my heart. Why are we here and where do we go and how come we're so hard? After school, John heads back to a specially adapted home here in Lismore. And just like any other teenager, he likes to do his own thing. <laughs> Likes to close the door in his room and go in and do his own thing at times, listen to music, interested in sport, um, has his own ideas and opinions about things. We are in my bedroom. There's all my personal belongings and stuff that really means something to me. In recent years, John's health began to worsen when a curvature started to develop in his spine. We knew he had problems with his back developing in his lower back and he was very, very ill from that. So from we having a quite healthy child who was a chair user but who got on with life and managed his life quite well, we ended up with a child who was in getting sick quite regularly, um, having a lot of pain. John was diagnosed with needing complicated and risky spinal surgery, which he went for last year in Crumlin's Children's Hospital. Oh, he was a, he was a great character for sure, right from, you could see he was a bubbly uh, character, but he was quite sick. Um, he hadn't been able to absorb any food for quite a while. What was happening was his spine was uh, twisting 
into the space where his tummy should be and basically his stomach, an outlet of the stomach was getting blocked. John went for the surgery, which lasted over eight hours. It was a long, a long day. Uh, he went down for surgery about nine o'clock and we didn't hear, well, the liaison nurse was in touch with us throughout the day. But um, Mr. Kiley rang us then around seven that evening to say they had the bulk of the surgery covered. He was happy with the way things had gone and it had gone very well. The operation was a massive success. And again, just like when he was a newborn, his parents were able to bring him home. And a few months ago to celebrate, his mother Deirdre wrote a letter to Mooney Tunes on Radio 1, a show where listeners suggest songs that they would like performed in the Borgosh Energy Theatre. The song she asked for? Bring Him Home from Le Mis. John got to attend the concert on the night, and he told a packed theatre and thousands of radio listeners just how he felt after his surgery. I feel a million. A million dollars. So, what's next for John? Well, he hopes to go to university in Cork after his leaving cert, and it will be a difficult day for mom and dad when he does leave for college. It would be natural for us to be concerned, but we should move backwards a little bit and be there in the background supporting, like any other parents would, their own children. That's the next challenge to begin to let go, I suppose. I love my parents with all my love, really. I've no one else to love, really. Let him live. I really don't know what the fruits are. May bring. I hope to live here and live more as long as I possibly can. Well, whatever lies in the future, the Kenefix will be taking it one day at a time. <laughs>